Hey, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to look at how the strategy pattern works in Ruby. My name is Caesar, and I've been using Ruby since 2008 to build all sorts of web applications, from simple MVP apps to full-blown multi-million dollar ones. In the beginning, I used to hate it because every time I would change something, I would break some other parts of the app. And every time I needed to add a new feature, guess what? I needed to change some code and eventually break something. So I got really frustrated about it and started to look into how to solve both of these problems. And I eventually discovered that the solution to problem number one, i.e. not break stuff when you change code, is to test it really well using strong automated testing practices. But that's not as easy as it may sound. It took me years to fully master this process. And if you're interested in how to do that and not spend years discovering it all by yourself through trial and error, check out my book Bulletproof Ruby on Rails Applications, which I've linked in the description below. Now back to problem number two, i.e. extending your application with new features without changing too much code, is to design it really well. And that's where today's pattern comes in. The strategy pattern allows you to provide different variations of an algorithm by injecting them as dependencies. It's similar to the template method pattern which uses inheritance instead. Check out my template method pattern video if you want to learn how that one works. So the way the strategy pattern works is there is this wrapper object called the context which holds a reference to one of the strategies that you want to use and it delegates the work to that strategy without caring too much about how it does it. So you have this context object and the number of strategy objects that this context can reference. And you can add more strategies or change existing ones without touching the context object. That is adhering to the open-close principle because you can extend your application without having to change code. And to the dependency inversion principle which states that you should depend on abstractions, in this case the strategy interface, and not concretions, in this case the strategies themselves. So let's look at some code. I'm using a route class that simply calculates the time it would take to get to a destination from my current location. Now this is not a real application, so the actual location is fake, but it's there as an example, and I think it does a good job at that. So we have this route class that delegates the work to a strategy we provide via the vehicle instance variable. We can override the strategy by using the vehicle setter method whenever we want to use a different strategy for calculating the time it takes to arrive to our destination. I'm initializing the route object, which is the context object, with the car strategy. And on the next lines, I'm switching from the car strategy to the bike strategy and finally the boat strategy. If I run this code here, you'll see the output is different for each of the strategies. It's basically a different algorithm to calculate the time it takes to get to our destination. But from the perspective of the route class, the way each strategy works is irrelevant. As long as it returns the data it needs, it's not important how it does it. So that's nice because the strategies are decoupled from the context. The context can work with any strategy that respects a contract. The contract, in this case, is it needs to have a calculate route method that requires two arguments and it returns a printable value. Now you could argue that this contract is rather loose, but that's beyond the topic of this video. It could definitely be improved. Let's take a look inside the strategy classes. The way we're enforcing the contract is via this vehicle interface, which is basically a parent class that requires its subclasses to implement the calculate route method. Otherwise, it raises an exception. Okay, so each concrete strategy class inherits from this vehicle class and defines its own calculate route method. And while these algorithms are not very fancy, the point I'm trying to make is that each strategy class can have a totally different implementation of the algorithm. The contacts class doesn't care. So you'll see the car strategy multiplies the source name's length with the destinations. The bike strategy does the same, but it also squares the result and adds some error correction to it. And finally, the boat strategy cubes the result of multiplying the values. One thing to note about the client code is that it has to know about and provide the strategies. In other words, you're pushing some of the coupling to the client. So there you have it, that is the strategy pattern in Ruby. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out the design patterns playlist, which is also linked in the description. Bye!